Business over drinks. Business over drinks. This is Dave and Tom. This is business over drinks. All right. Hey, everybody. We've got a really exciting podcast coming up. Um, we're going to do another book review, actually. And uh, my mate Dave's got something really interesting that he's read. And he feels like everyone who listens to us, so maybe those two people like my mom, my cousin, and a few other people, all really need to know about it. So, Dave, why don't you give us a quick introduction to what the book is, man? Yeah, definitely. Your mom definitely needs to know about this book. And this book is called Built to Sell. And oh, it's nice. written by John Warrillow. And this book is for anyone who's looking to sell their business or thinking of exiting their business or if they'd be just interested in creating a business that doesn't need them or who doesn't want that way. Business is just self-sustaining and it's just there doing its thing, giving you dividends while you do all nice. things. Nice. Yeah. No, man, I, I think that's kind of what most entrepreneurs are looking at as well because beyond starting a business and like being really passionate about it, everyone's looking at how do I exit it, right? How do I make my money and walk away because I'm mm. putting all these hours into something, building it. Then that's where's the reward, right? So where's yeah, my money? People, yeah, basically that's it, man. People asking, where's my money? And I know that um, we need to figure we need to figure that out. I need to figure that out as an entrepreneur as well. Like, how do I exit mm. my business? So, I mean, I'm going to be listening to this one really, really, really closely, and I'll probably be reading the book real soon. Yeah. So, why don't you give us a little bit of the premise, man? Tell us, tell us the, some, give us the cliff notes. Yeah. So, what I love about this book is, <laughs> like, for those who've who've tried reading business books before, a lot of you might be able to relate to this. But at the start of it, where it's just really exciting and promises a lot of stuff, but then it just becomes really, really dry. With this one. It's really easy to read or listen to if you're listening to the audiobook. And it's really practical and useful. And the way they, they tell the story is by telling a story, right? So it's about this guy, this small business owner named Alex. And he's just struggling with his life. He, he just owns an advertising agency. He's tired all the time. He's working all the time. And he just wants to sell and have a bit of a holiday. And this book, and then, then, then Alex meets his, this wealthy friend of his named Ted. And Ted kind of guides Alex through the whole process of what to do to be able to sell your book, sell your business. All right, man. So, so that's really interesting because we're looking at someone who's kind of writing about his own experiences, right? So it's not just, you know, some like a maybe maybe not a self-help guru kind of like or a business expert. This is someone who's just literally chronicling their experience, right? Yeah. That's really interesting, man. I, I think what would be interesting maybe if you could share – some of your experiences as well, because I know that you also exited a business yourself uh, mm. when you were when you were working in agency. So I think there's a lot of parallels. And maybe you can just tell us what some of the things that you took from your own experience and how this book kind of relates to that as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this this book really hit the mark with me when I co-owned this this agency called Studio Culture. It was a digital marketing agency. It wasn't exactly an advertising agency, but it had a similar level of service. And we weren't thinking of selling. I was just thinking of exiting at the time. But still, we, we got a lot of advice from it that made the business just a stronger business. So the, the first thing that Ted advises Alex, the protagonist in his book, is that his business had no differentiating factor. And it was overly reliant on him. And 40% of the revenue just came from one client. So what that basically means is that if the business is overly reliant on the owner, any potential buyer will just say, this business can't exist without the owner. So if their buyer does want to buy the business, there's a high chance they'll want to do like an earn out agreement, which means they'll pay the owner a small fee up front. And if the owner stays in the business and achieves certain KPIs, they'll pay the rest within three to five years, which is could be a really dangerous trap. And also, if you're wanting to sell your business and just get the hell out of there, you probably don't want to stick around for three to five years and report to a new, new buyer or an investor. So the first yeah, thing... Yeah. You know, yeah, did you have any... No, I was no, agreeing with you, man. That that sounds yeah. like a nightmare to me, to be very honest, because if you're looking at, you're, you're exiting, your mind's kind of gone now because you, you're, you've you sold your baby, right? So this is, it's gone, yeah. right? But you're still forced to kind of sit there and then watch someone potentially butcher the thing that you've built versus being then, able to kind of separate yourself. And if you, if, if you have like that business owner mindset, you wouldn't really want to report to people or just telling you what to do about the business either. So it could be help. So a few huge lessons we, we got from, from this book. 
is structure your business in a way where it's not overly dependent on you. So you can start from today, right? Start thinking of a plan where you can empower your management team to make the decisions that you generally make and start building up your business in a way where the cash flow can eventually afford someone of your position without you being in there or, or two people. Because, you know, they say that you'll never have someone with the same passion as a business owner. But time and time again, it's been proven that you know, companies continue to survive. Look at Apple, for example. The stock went really down when they found out that Steve Jobs had cancer and it, went, it dropped again when he died. But then now it's it's a trillion dollar company. It's huge. It's just Tim Cook has just taken it to next level. So there is evidence out there that you could find good management that can help take your business to the next level without you having to be there. Yeah, no, that's um, true. That's true. It's, it's difficult. I mean, I'm just taking my experience because I'm running Sync right now, right? Yeah. And I think I'm too involved in everything mm. where if you took me out of the business it could potentially it'll it'll definitely collapse and while yeah. everyone's like you know that's really important you're the you're the founder that actually is a terrible thing because if you can't separate yourself and, and remove yourself from the business there's no way you can scale and grow the business as well because you can't really replicate yourself right mm-hmm. you have to be able to break that down in things that can be replicated easily and find people and find the right people um jack ma from Ali- alibaba actually said the most interesting thing he said his entire career has been working towards the time when he's least when he's not needed i'm paraphrasing heavily there because i cannot remember his exact quote but it kind of fits into what you're trying to say there as well because he's he's he runs he owns a billion billion dollar company a right? multi-billion dollar company one of the largest countries in the world and his entire career has been moving towards when he can leave he's, he already knows that he's been like okay cool i want to put everyone in position to succeed i don't need to be there and that's mm-hmm. to me that was very interesting hearing it because everyone else kind of talks about you know the the need to be so involved in it or the need to be like you know you have you got to put the hours in if you're not working somebody else is working harder than you and all that stuff and this guy runs one of the biggest companies well he built it from scratch and he was like yeah like you know it works not everything I've benefited from this company all I want. Now it's time for me to move on, right? And he, mm-hmm. he transitioned himself out. Now as China goes through the tech, their tech uh, issues at the moment, no one knows where Jack Ma is, but all right, let's hope he's good, he's well and is good. He, is he missing? No one's seen him in a while. I'll, I'll just say that, man. A lot of the tech giants, the CEOs are, are, are not in the public eye that much anymore. Jack Ma, if you're listening to this, which you most likely are, please come home. Yeah, that's right, Jack Ma. You and Pony Ma too, yeah. Do you see? Pony Ma. Oh, Pony, it's it's a nickname. Not for Jack Ma. There's a that's another a massive Chinese entrepreneur, Pony Ma. Yeah. As you can see, Pony Dave Ma. knows nothing about Asian businesses, especially Chinese businesses. But you tell you tell him anything about a Filipino business, he won't know as well. Nothing either. So, <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe maybe you shouldn't be giving us this book review, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, no, take, take us to the end. Take us to the end. Take us to the end. Give us give us the give us the Give us the takeaways that you think well we should be we should be um, taking from this book if you read it. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. So, so building up a business where that it's not dependent on you, right? So, so they give a few hints on on how to do this. One is to stop doing more customized solutions and start systemizing everything and making things simpler, easier to teach your employees, easier to sell to your clients. And they give an example. Right. So at the start of the book, Alex, he had a, a different design and advertising solution for every client. They all wanted different things from him and he serviced them in very different ways. It was really hard to hand over to someone else. So in the end, they they decided to specialize instead of generalize. So that instead of becoming a full service advertising agency, they became a logo design agency and they narrowed their services into one product called the five step logo design process. And in that process, the client had to pay a bit up front and a bit in the end to manage the company's cash flow. And to tie to that, Ted recommended that Alex hire two salespeople. And these salespeople, not only two because they'll compete with each other, and also these salespeople had a product selling background, not a service selling background, because they said if the salesperson had a service selling background, they'll most likely find tailored solutions to sell to each client rather than a product salesperson who, can, who will say, hey, hang on, why don't we turn this offering into one product and make it easier, more streamlined, and sell it as it is. So that's one way he did it. Another way is, uh, as I hinted at before, is to empower your management team. So one way they recommend in this book to empower your team is to give them long-term incentives to stay on board. For example, there's a fund for, for the management 
that gets handed out to them after every year, but then a huge handout gets sent to them every five years of staying in the business. And they recommend it against share ownership. Well, they, they, there's more technical, there's a bit technical. So refer to the book for more information on that. And then you said, um, what, what are some biggest highlights? I think the biggest takeaway for me when I first listened to this book was that it's possible like it's, it's, it's possible and it's not such a bad thing to build your business to make it sellable and to package it up in a way where it's just earning good cash. It's a, got a good management team and it doesn't need you. Obviously, easier said than done. It takes a lot of work. But if you're disciplined enough to know from the get go and have that mission and you keep coming back to it, you'll get distracted over time. I'm sure to keep coming yeah. back to the mission that I want to build this business up in a way that's systemized good management and in a way that one day that i won't need to be there and if i have the option to sell it when when you when you were working in an agency right sorry man i'm gonna cut you off but i'm just super curious and i I wanted to make sure i ask this question before i forget when you're working in agency right were you were you expendable or like not expendable but replaceable by the time i exited i was so they they found replacement for me but only to a certain skill level so because i was wearing a a better skill a better skill level than you Right. You wish. Best skill level <laughs> than you, most likely. But uh, because I wore many hats, I had to do finances, help with finance, all the business related stuff. This person just did one role that I was responsible for. So mm. they replaced one part, but not the complete business owner part. So, all right. No, that, that's interesting. Man. That's, that's that's an interesting to thing to notice as well, because I think we all kind of wear multiple hats, right? Yeah. And then replacing multiple hats is difficult because you're not going to get someone who's going to take on so many different roles unless that person is as invested in the business as you. I don't think, I, I, I somewhat agree and somewhat disagree that I don't think you'll ever be able to find someone as invested mm. as you who started the business. But I also don't think that you won't be able to find maybe a couple of people, maybe three people who will be able to take in, take over what you're doing and do it as well or even better than you sometimes because they are more focused and they are very clear mm. what they need to do. And they're not emotionally invested in things. So to be fair, that's sometimes better for business. Definitely. I was about to say that, man. Like, well, they replaced the crucial, like the marketing side of, of what I did, <clears> which <throat> is probably the best part because you want someone who's all they do is marketing, for example. And then you want the one person who's all they do is finance. You don't want someone who does marketing and finance where it's diluted and they're not as specialized. Yeah, that's true. No, I, I agree. I agree, man. It, it's a, it's a, it's always a struggle, right? Because you're from early stage. How do you, ex- how do you get enough cash flow to be able to do it? Should you yeah. be spending, you know, uh, like twice your salary in order to bring in three people who will take over your role? You know, it, these questions are things that you kind of need to ask yourself sometimes. Mm. And I think that's an interesting way of looking at it, man. It, are there any final words about the book, though? Like it, like any sort of like last selling point that you kind of want to drive through, drive home? No, nah, man. No. Nah. Yeah. So yeah, as you can tell, <laughs> Dave Dave's emotionally invested was invested in this po- podcast and this specific episode. So. <laughs> I was really enthusiastic. Like, like, no, yeah. But if if you want, there's a lot more to it. I think this is a this is a really good starting point, and hopefully you got some value from what we what Tony and I talked about. But it goes into much more detail. Check it out. I listened to the audiobook. It's so super easy to listen to, and you won't. For me, anyway, I didn't drone out. Check it out, businessoverdrinks.com forward slash books. You get your first audio book for free, and then you also get to support our show. All right. Thanks, everybody. Everyone have a safe and prosperous new year. And a Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. If you're single, then you know it. Clap your hands. 